King, for sure. How you feel, man? Paperwork, man. Ninth album. A yeah. lot of cats don't get that far, man. Yeah, man. It's a blessing, man. I really do appreciate being able to be here, man, and, and still do what I love for a living. What do you think makes this album different than the previous eight albums? Like, what, what stands out to you from this project? Because I know you take each project very seriously. You do a lot of fucking records. You do, like, tons of records. Like, I do. Talk to me about paperwork and what makes this like different than the previous works. I, I believe this one was different, man, because uh, I didn't necessarily have any any uh, box or conformities. You know what I mean? I ain't had nothing that I felt I had to do except grow, show growth, show evolution, and 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 just push myself beyond my limitations as an artist creatively. And also, you know, usually every time there has been, you know, the uh, a T.I. hiatus, uh, whenever I listen to everything that's going on, that tells me exactly what not to do. You know what <laughs> whenever I hear, okay, this is what everyone else is doing, this is the lane they're going down, I make a conscious effort to go the opposite direction. Uh, with, I mean, with understanding of what everyone's doing, so I can sprinkle, you know, little elements of it in here and there, but I make a conscious effort to go the opposite direction so I can continue to carve out my own lane. Yeah. So what was it about the current state that you felt like, okay, this is cool and I see this is why people are moving, but I want to go a different direction? It, it, right now, it's too electronic right now. You know what I'm saying? That's just my, you know, from what I have heard or, or, or from what I could observe compared to... The anti-electronic clap. <laughs> I mean, don't get me wrong. I mean, you know, I, I appreciate all art forms of music, all creations, everything that people put their blood, sweat, and tears, their heart and soul into, I salute it and appreciate it. But as far as what, the way I came up, the art form that I grew to love, it has gotten way too electronic now, and it's too easy to make beats and say, here, I'm a producer. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, I, I mean, you know, so I felt like, man, you know, we're going to get the instrumentation, bring the music back. We're going to try to, to infuse the, the way it used to be done with the way that it will be done tomorrow, the way UGK did with Riding Dirty, the way Jay did with Blueprint, the way... Uh, 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 Snoop did with Doggy Style, the way Outkast did with Southern Player Listed. You know what I'm saying? You had elements of groups you may not have known. You may not have known Sly and, and the Family Stone. You may not have known Parliament. Uh, you may not have known... Uh, you <laughs> They're gonna learn today. <laughs> you, I mean, you, 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 may, you may not have known all of these other... Where the, where the, sounds where the came sound from. came yeah, from, yeah. but when it was presented to you, it didn't sound old. Yeah. It sounded like, man, what's this new shit that sounds... It's just funky, you know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah. And that's what I feel like we hadn't really gotten enough of in today's hip-hop. So it's like the soul in a lot of sense, right? The soul, yeah, the soul and the instrumentation. So that's why I guess Pharrell made the perfect partner in that, right? Because Absolutely. this is a situation where you let him be executive producer, like you gave up some power with this process and really partnered with him on this project. I definitely did. I mean, you know, Pharrell, he and I, we are so, so close together and so far apart in, <laughs> in so many different ways, man. Uh, just our approaches to, to, to music, to life, to we, we have so many similarities, yet so many differences that, you know what I'm saying, we both kind of let go a little bit. You know what I'm saying? Like we had each of the songs that you hear on, on, on paperwork, 
all of those sessions were followed by at least an hour of commentary. He and I going <laughs> back and forth on why this record is the shit and why it's better than another record and why this is what needs to be heard and this is, and you know, we both agree, but for different reasons, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And uh, I think, man, it's that, just that amount of passion, that amount of honesty, that amount of, to, for me to be challenged, you know, just cause I'm a competitive, I'm a competitive spirit. So if you challenge me, you know what I'm saying? Quite naturally, I'm going, uh, you know, I'm gonna I'm a, I'm a, I'm a rise to the occasion. Also, you're two guys that have such a rich history, each of you. Sure. So there's the challenge of how do we stay fresh? How do we create something that like, is, is honorable to our legacies, individually sure. and collectively, right? Sure, I think for me it was, how can I let Pharrell give me the wings to take me here and still remain the anchor that keeps me here? You know what I'm saying? And I think that, you know, that's why it's that dichotomy that, you know, that drives this project. What do you respect most about Pharrell? I think his ability to reinvent himself, his ability to color outside of the lines and to, to, to diversify himself as a producer with working with all types of artists from, uh, from Pusha T to Snoop Dogg to Daft Punk to Robin Thicke to Miley Cyrus to T.I. to, I mean, he's been on the chart with everybody. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. In all genres. Has Pharrell done a country record? <laughs> Pharrell, I challenge you to do a country record. You know what I'm saying? Anybody who can take a song like Happy and make it like, you know, I was going to say, what did you make of him? Yeah. I mean, you got, I seen gangsters, cold gangsters. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> on Bankhead, on Crenshaw, in Brooklyn. I mean, cold hearted gangsters. You know what I'm saying? Happy. Because I'm happy. This is my shit, son. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Anytime you know you get a you get a you get a producer that could do that in music without compromising the integrity of his brand and without alienating the people from the other genres he's worked with. That's that's you know lightning in a bottle. That's sheer talent. I was gonna say, but like all those behind the scenes wins, now he's in the forefront. He's an artist in his own right. Like. How is that changing me, your estimation? Did that, did that affect any way you guys working together at all? Well, I mean, it lessened the time we had to work, of course, <laughs> but I mean, as a homeboy, as, as his partner, and, and just as a supporter, man, you know, man, go do that. I can handle this. You know what I'm saying? Like, for real, you've done, I always tell him, bro, you done did enough for me. I'm good. Yeah. I don't need, you ain't got to show up to 106 and park with me. You ain't got to, you know, you go do the voice. You go ahead and travel to Stockholm or yeah. wherever, you know what I'm saying? Wherever you got to go, man, to get your, to get your just do, man, go and get it. When you get back, I'm going to have this handled. Yeah. And that was, you know, that's the way we work. I'm not really bitching and moaning and griping because I can't get Pharrell to do this, that, or the other. He did what I needed him to do, more than I would have asked him to do. Yeah. Also, I heard he was, played a role in influencing you to go with Columbia Records, because for people that don't know, you had a very lengthy, long relationship with Atlantic Records, gave them a lot of albums, a lot of hits, and then you was a free agent. Like, talk about that and what, what Pharrell may have said to help convince you to go to Columbia, and, and just what that whole process was like being a free agent at this point in your career. Well, I mean, man, Pharrell, basically, even before, even when I was, you know, uh, working on my last album with Atlantic, yeah. uh, he was very just instrumental ever since I got out of prison. Like, when I got out of prison, that was my first, that was the first beat CD I got from, from Pharrell. You know what I'm saying? And we did that, uh, and we did that one record, man. What did we call that record? Hear Ye, Hear Ye. There you go. <laughs> Who is that person? I, <laughs> I did that record in the halfway house. That was the very first record that I wow. recorded. That it was that record and then the one that I did with with, with Crit, Flexing. Flexing. So those were the first two records that I did coming home. But Pharrell's record, Pharrell was the first beat C D that I got. And ever since then, you know, it seemed like every time I get every time I come home from prison, Pharrell's the first person I see. <laughs> <laughs> He's always sh showing up as soon as I I'm come free. home. I'm free. Skateboard P. And he's like, well, let's get to work. <laughs> uh, but um, I mean, man, and, and ever since then, he's just consistently 
like very genuinely week in, week out, calling, checking, how's the music coming, what are you thinking, what's your plans, you know what I'm saying, just that kind of shit. So I'm like, man, he's the one that's most consistent and most genuine in his, you know, uh, support. Yeah. And I feel like, you know, that, that, that's, that's hustle gang shit. That's what we do over yeah. here. And I mean, I just definitely appreciated it to the utmost. And when he said, uh, when I became a free agent, of course, you know what I'm saying? We had all kinds of offers being So you were around. Dr. Dre sitting down yeah, in the photos? Yeah, I spoke to the doc. I say, doc, you don't care nothing about no music, man. <laughs> Good and damn well, you ain't finna do no album. <laughs> <laughs> I can't get four tracks from you. I know. Good and damn well. Nah, man, I love doc, man. Me and him have an awesome, uh, an awesome relationship. I just felt that he had so much going on and I saw him so far and few in between, you know, but thank you to Doc because he, he blessed me as well. But thank you to him. But I mean, like for, for real, bro, it was really like, he said that in his experience, Columbia was the most artist driven company he's ever been, in, been at or, or witnessed. He, like they are pro art. So they not gonna press you to have it finished by this date to complete the end of their fiscal. They're not going to, you know, they're Beat not gonna. Fiscal. Yeah, they're not gonna bring all of the other elements that kind of cloud an artist's mind and decision making. If this is the single you want to go with, they gonna let you go with that single. You know what I'm saying? They not gonna force you to do something or conform to something that doesn't suit your art and I had, you know, and no offense to, to Atlantic, I love Atlantic. They're my longtime friends, partners, supporters. I still love, admire, and respect everybody in the building to this day, but make no mistake, we was all in it to get money. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. At Atlantic, it was okay, so tip, welcome home. When you think you can have this ready for us? <laughs> uh, you got one now? Let's hear it. Which one of these songs are we going to play? What's the rollout? How many sponsors? What other kind of marketing plans can we get going? Let's get this. And that, in a sense, made me a huge star. Mm -hmm. Just, you know, because they challenged me with deadlines. You know what I'm saying? We're actually staying in tune with the business side of it. And whereas, you know, here I'm challenged with, you know, expanding as much as I can as an artist. Well, here with this project, you went with a unique rollout. You went with All About the Money with Young Thug and then No Mediocre with Iggy. Talk about your mindset of why you felt that was a good one-two punch because those records came right on top of each other too. Sure, I felt like if I didn't come with them first, if people heard the album uh, first and didn't hear those records, they would sound out of place. You know what I'm saying? I felt they were necessary to show people that, okay, this is a new sound, this is something, all right, but see, but the album is a cohesive blend of things, and those records, I think they were great introduction records. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. They had the tempo, about, for one, about the money was undeniable. I didn't, yeah. As soon as me and Thug did that, we shot the video like a day and a half later, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. We went to sleep, woke up, and we were shooting the video. And, <laughs> you, uh, you, you made him shoot a video. He was like, we shooting the video. Damn sure. You know what I'm <laughs> but, 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 you know what I'm saying? Thugger, 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 man, they yeah, pulled... what's Thugger like, man? I never met this brother, man. This brother's like got a new style. He's, he's definitely man. changing the game. Everybody sure. hated him. We don't know what he's saying, and now we all love him. Like, you know what's what? this brother about, man? Thugger, man, for real. And in his defense, let me ask you, <laughs> did you understand everything ODB was saying? Nope. No, no sir. You did? Y'all from Brooklyn. <laughs> Y'all from Brooklyn. <laughs> did, you, did you understand everything Bone Thugs and Harmony was saying? No, nah, that, that was a little fast for me. That was a little fast. Did your mama and daddy understand everything Jane too. Brown was saying? <laughs> huh. Your mom yeah. and dad didn't understand what Jane Brown was saying. They just like it. But even you, I know you go through your veteran phase where you're like, you're hard on young boys. Young boys got to prove themselves to you. You know what I mean? Like, I'm sure at first you was like, okay, what's, what's, what's Shorty about? Sure you know I mean? was. I'm sure I was. See, I met, I know Thug from the streets of Atlanta. You know what I'm saying? I know him, you know, 
and up from other things. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> So other things. Yeah, he, he he run with my cousin and them, my little cousin and my little partners. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> they like I call them. They the lost boys. They like you know what I'm saying? <laughs> no bullshit. They you know. Sorry back, to laugh. Nah, man. Back when they were like 18, 19, you know, they was in some real heavy shit. You know, yeah. and that's what I know him from. And when I heard that he was rapping. You know, I'm, of course, you know, eager to Most support. Skeptical. Nah, I'm no. eager to support. Okay. But I'm like, you know, once it gets to a level where I hear about it from somewhere else besides y'all, yeah. then I'll listen to it. Yeah. And then, you know, just slowly but surely, I start hearing the name. And uh, then, you know, he had the Stoner, the Stoner record. I didn't know it was him. I was like, man, who is this song that keeps playing on the radio? And then, you know, finally my little cousin was like, man, that's Thug. I'm like, oh, shit. <laughs> then he had the, uh, the Danny Glover and passed me the hookah. I said, man, you know what? Why don't y'all just come on by the studio and we'll see. <laughs> we'll see what, this, you see what the guy got. You know what I'm saying? Y'all pull on up, man. We'll see Give what Give them the correct do. address. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? But, but, but that is when uh, they, they immediately pulled up, like the next couple of days, you know, Promptly after the strip club closed, you know, <laughs> they pull up and I was just in there working as usual and, and shit, we just so happened to throw, you know, throw a beat on and about the money with the first record we did. But what's he like? Like, what, what did you recognize the talent from working with him even more? Like, just being in the lab I mean, with him? man, to be honest with you, man, if you get around him, he's going to be just like anybody that been in the, in the projects all their life and happy to be out. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I mean, honestly, man, he, he's... He, 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 he gonna ride or die by his children, his brothers, his sisters, his mama. You know what I'm saying? He ain't, he ain't going for no disrespect. You know, he, he, he's a, you know, he like the lad joke, kick it, you know what I'm saying? And do everything else good niggas like to do. Is He just kind of like express himself through his music and his, I guess his fashion, a yeah. little different than everybody else. <laughs> I don't really care about that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like what he that that on what I know about you when I see you. You know what I'm saying? With this right here, mm -hmm. if you go right now and dye your hair blue, purple, the and, blue mohawk. Yeah, blue mohawk. I'm gonna <laughs> more so go off of what I experience from you when we in a act man as by your men. interaction. I'm gonna yeah. judge you by not what other people say about you, but what I know about you. What was it like in your position, like you and Jeezy being kind of the veterans of the ATL, respected, sure. you know, For guys sure. who paved the way. And I, there was a lot of times, I think I read in one of your pieces, he was saying that, you know, a lot of the young cats came under Gucci Mane, a guy that you're not really 100 with. Yeah. You know, what was it like then making a connection to, like, a thug or Amigos or Rich Homie Quan, those kind well, of artists? Well, see, I mean, the thing, once again, I can't really, I never hold uh, one man accountable for another man's actions. You know what I'm saying? Now, it'll be different if you still was rocking with dude, then that would mm. provide a conflict. So, you know what I'm saying? I feel like ultimately, man, you know, the proof is in the push. Shit, sh shit speak for itself. Okay. <laughs> what do you think about? I, I mean, it's real. <laughs> what about, uh, <laughs> I know you also developed a lot of respect also, speaking of the ATL's regeneration uh, with Migos and Rich Homie Quan. Talk about your interactions with them and how you got to know them. I mean, the same way, just when Cats just started, you know, consistently putting out hit records, I'm like, come on by, let's see what you got. Yeah. I literally pull up on them, what's up? Oh, you pull up on Cats? I pull up on them just like that, what's up? <laughs> what you got, what y'all doing in here? You know what I'm saying? Let's see what you got, just like that, for yeah. real. Yeah. You, I mean, that's your thing about, besides your career, you've always cultivated other talent. <laughs> let's talk about Grant Hustle's first lady, man, Iggy Azalea, like, how did that, Come together like you saw the vision way before the charts topping hits right. in this tremendous year she's had like right. talk about what, how you first got in business with her how did that how did that come to be well my uh my dj mlk he uh kind of got me a list of cats to look for when i came home and i just you know immediately went to where we find all the things in life nowadays we find on the internet and uh, i just <laughs> i just began to just search and find and when I saw her, I immediately knew that there was something special about her. You know what I'm saying? I mean, aside from her being 
uh, six feet blonde and just, you know, rapping like, rapping like she's from Bankhead. Or, or, or Alabama or Houston or something like that. I just knew that she had some, it's kind of like, you know that killer instinct, that kind of, that, that undeniable determination that you see when you look in Rihanna's eyes? That what I seen in Iggy, you know what I'm saying? Like, whether you like it or not, I'm gonna be there. So, you know what I'm saying? You can get down with this shit now, you can kick yourself in the ass later. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, that's, that's what I see when I see her. And I immediately called her people and asked if we could, you know, get together for a meeting. And when she came, that pretty much what she told me. You know, it's smart of you to call me. And then I, I heard the it's accent. Smart of you to call you. <laughs> that's exactly what she said. That on hello, that's what she said. Smart of you to call me because uh, I am going to be smashing shit soon and no one is going to be able to breathe and you may want some oxygen, and if you're down with me, I'll allow you to have oxygen. And that was she said, I said, <laughs> you show sure right. And you know, and I said, I tell you what then, why don't you do this, man? Let me see if it's something that I can add to what you already got going. So what was that? What were you able to add to the situation? Strategy. The strategy, you know what I'm saying? Just how to, you know, she was doing a lot of shit and she had developed a huge, huge fan base and motherfuckers would drive for miles to come see her whenever she was performing. I just felt like, you know what I'm saying? There was some dots that needed to be connected. It was some people that needed to be replaced and it was, you know, just a proper application of skill that needed to be platformed and presented. But she always had like a vision for how she would, you know, present her talent, like how she, like how she saw her art. Everything yeah. from wardrobe to set designs and you know what I'm saying, all that shit, she already had that. It just was the business side of it. The, the mm. actual, you know, the, the, the facilitating of all of the, the, the moving parts that needed to come together for it to be a success. I mean, success because of big records like Fancy and those kind of records, like, do you feel like, okay, when these records came together, like, this is gonna be, this yeah. is gonna impact culture? I said immediately fancy, I said, hey, that's the, that, that's the record. And then she, you know, of course, in the grand Iggy Fest, she, I don't know, I think I like, and I'm like, okay, cool. And I say, hey, fancy, that's the record right there. And you know what I'm saying? And you know, and then now fancy became, you know what I'm saying? The, the longest state at number one for a female hip hop artist, you know, uh, then, you know, Iggy say, I always knew Fancy was the record. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know what I'm saying? I think that, man, man, little sis got a long way to go, man. She still, she still got so much of a future ahead of her. I don't think people have even begun to see what she's capable of. But with so much success, she's also reached a lot, gotten a lot of slander this year, you know what I mean? Like, does that bother you? Like, why do you think she's been able some, under attack so much in different situations? I mean, I guess because of how successful she became so soon, you know what I mean? She took a lot of motherfucker spots, like, fast, like, you know what I'm saying? It's, I, <laughs> I mean, literally, like, on the radio, like, there's only so many songs that can be played. Mm -hmm. And if they playing her song so many times, then they ain't gonna play yours so much. And so shit. <laughs> but some people criticize, like you said, the accent, like she speaks a certain way, but when she raps, she sounds like she's not from Australia. Like, sure. How much you think her accent or just like that perception is what people, you know, are turned off by or kind of criticize? I don't think it matters, man. I think the people who talk bad about Iggy, it's kind of like if you go into a sold out Jay-Z concert in Barclays, you know, sold out, right? And everybody's rocking, repeating every word. And then right in the way in the back in the corner, somebody saying, that nigga ain't shit. <laughs> Come on, dude, you came all the way here to say that? You know what I'm saying? That's how I see the people who talk bad by Iggy. Like it's, you know what I'm saying? Like it's so much support, so much love, so much success that it's just far cries in the back of a very crowded room. But do you think it's hard for people to accept because also race being a factor, I guess, that she's a white female? We haven't really seen a white female this I level mean, of success? 
in, in, two, hip -hop? in 2014, if the only thing we have to not like about an artist is because they're white, I think that's whack of you. Mm -hmm. I mean, I just think that shows how behind the times you are. I mean, grow up, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> but do you feel this responsibility to like to protect her and de defend her honor in a lot of ways? I mean, we're a family over here at Hustle Gang, so we going you know what I'm saying? We're going to defend our family anyway, mm -hmm. all the time, yeah. right or wrong. What you did in the Snoop Dogg situation, like why, why do you think that got to that point where you had to get involved and, you know, why, why, and why did Snoop apologize to you and not to Iggy? For one, I don't know, like, the apology was his idea. I didn't ask anybody to apologize or nothing. And also, I consider Snoop family as well. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? He's as close to Hustle Gang without being Hustle Gang as a motherfucker can get. To me, you know what I'm saying? Uh, I mean, to me, I, I felt the need to step in when it wasn't their exchange back and forth that was the problem. It was everyone else dumping gasoline on the fire, making it bigger than it had to be. Even since it has subsided, it's still being just poked at. They won't allow either one of them, or me neither for that matter, to let the shit go. You know what I'm saying? It just <laughs> continues and continues this week in the Snoop and Iggy saga. And I'm like, man, both of them got so much more shit going on. And if they choose not to rock with each other respectfully, what the fuck business is it of anybody else's? If he say he don't really appreciate what she do, and she say she don't appreciate what he do, what else is there to talk about? You know what I'm saying? Maybe at over time, if you leave them the fuck alone, maybe they will grow and, and, and get around to where they both get, no, get over whatever it is that separate them. Maybe they'll find something that will bring them together instead of having you reminding them of what's keeping them apart. Yeah. And I think that, that that has a lot to do with what go on in the public, you know what I'm saying? Like the media, not you of course, but. <laughs> <laughs> but do you think it also plays a part with speculation about Iggy and Nikki and, you know, females in the top spot in the, that side of the game and, you know, it well, seemed now. like that maybe Nikki was taking jabs at her. Like, the don't, your, don't, your, don't your wife have an argument with her girlfriends and shit and come telling you about it and you're like, mm-hmm, <laughs> mm-hmm, I hear you. You know what I'm saying? Y'all going to be right back in the nail shop next week <laughs> talking about me. So what the fuck? <laughs> so I mean, you know, ultimately, man, you know, you gotta let women take their own time. I don't care what you do, whatever it is, whether it's a, you could be a hairdresser, you could be a, a secretary, you could be a, 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 a dental assistant, a dentist, or whatever it is. If it's two women in the same office, that bitch better not be at the copy machine when I'm at the copy machine. I tell you what, turn this motherfucker out. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's just what women do, you know what I'm saying? It could be a, I mean, for real, you could be a, a crosswalk lady. Bitch, <laughs> bitch, better not let another child cross this crosswalk. Now another one. And that's just how women is, you know, and eventually, Eventually, over time, whatever it was that they was, you know, upset about, you know what I'm saying, that shit will blow over. And then they, girl, your hair is so beautiful. Where did you get that bag? You know what I'm saying? So shit. Because I remember you said that, it was like, is it ever going to be an Iggy Nicky record? He's like, it's going to take some time. It's going to take some time. <laughs> it's going to take, as, we, as it does with most women, it takes time. You know what I'm saying? I ain't got time to sit around and watch my watch while this shit to take time. I got other shit to do. So while they taking their time, I'ma stay busy. By the time I look up, it'll be, oh, oh, y'all, oh, y'all cool now. Oh, great. So you just gonna roll with it. Exactly. <laughs> but speaking of women, you make records on the album, you know, like you got a strip club joint with Chris Brown, like you make certain records. You like that one? It's Chris Brown strip club joint? Y'all just nasty. <laughs> you nasty. <laughs> just as raunchy as you wanna be. You said that, don't talk about that. You said I'm, I feel obligated to make a strip club record on each album because where I mean, you from? 
Yeah, not necessarily because of where I'm from. Well, it is a part of our culture. Let's not yeah. just make no mistake of it. Uh, I mean, man, to be honest with you, I just feel like certain times, man, you know what I'm saying, women need excuses to just be nasty. <laughs> That's what they need. They need an excuse. They, they're just looking for some for an excuse, you know, an exception. Normally, I'm a lady, <laughs> but I'm willing to make an exception. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And I would like my I would like my song to be the soundtrack for that excuse. <laughs> It could be quite lucrative. Right, well, you know, the money is just an intangible benefit. You know what I'm saying? That's, <laughs> How can one measure that? Yeah, you know what I'm saying? It can't really, you know, I ain't even counting that part. But it's not all funny games. Like, you have a record like Stay. That just seems like a very personal record, very vulnerable record. Like, was that difficult to record? And, like, you make so many records. Why was that important uh -huh. to put that on the album? Nah, it wasn't difficult to record. It was very easy to record. Everything, everything's sincere, you know what I'm saying? I mean, you're talking about shit you know. Those are the easiest records to do. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, something that's, 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 that, you, that you have as much information and passion about. You know <laughs> what I'm saying? It's, it's, those are very easy records to do. What's the line you have? You want heaven or you want hell? Uh, huh? What's the, what's the thing? What did you say? No, the lyric, the lyric is like, you want that's heaven or hell? That's not a hard decision. <laughs> you, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Do you want to be right or do you want to be with me? That was yeah, one of the lines there. Yeah, you want war, you want peace. You want, yeah, you want war, you want peace, you want to be right or you want to be with me. Yep. That's good sound relationship advice from T.I.P. I don't know if it worked for you. <laughs> I don't know what worked for you, you know what I'm saying? I mean, for real, I, I am the only, this is the only me I know how to be. Yeah. And I'm difficult, you know what I'm saying? I'm difficult and I'm hard to get along with sometimes. And I understand that, but you know, it's offset with, you know what I'm saying, all kinds of other great things that are about yeah. me. Let's focus on those. Let's talk about that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Let's talk well, part about of the great things is your partner and your children. And you know, also sure. on our, that song, I Don't Know, I wanted to ask you about that because on that, you talk about, you know, I think some, some of us think about a lot, like, what if, what if, God forbid, you go to jail again? You know what I mean? Like, you sort of speculate on that concept. Sure. And how that would, have, that would impact your family. Right. You know, talk about why you felt like sharing that, that sentiment. Because, I mean, I feel like, you know, ultimately, man, uh, Martin Luther King, I read Martin Luther King a quote that said, if a man had not found something he's willing to die for, he's not fit to live. You know what I mean? And if I ain't gonna die for, you know, for my family, man, if, what is it? You know what I mean? And ultimately, well, thank you guys. It's, <laughs> it's like five courageous people in here. What do you like as a child, T.I.? Yeah. <laughs> you know, I believe as a, as a child, it was seeing how the, cult, how the art form uh, affected my older like cousins and older sisters and my uncles to see how they responded to it. And I guess I would be looking for attention. So I, like to get attention from them, I would rap like LL Cool J, you know what I'm saying? Nobody can rap quite like I can. I and I knew all the words, you see what I'm saying? Yeah. Like I could actually say the words. All they did was they just kind of tried to mimic The it. cadence, yeah. Yeah, they, but see, I knew the words. And so, hence my love for language. There we see? go. And so then it translated into, I finished a test at school earlier than everybody else, because I was smart. And um, <laughs> they wouldn't let me get up, they wouldn't let me do nothing. I was just sitting, I was stuck sitting there waiting on all of the other slow kids to finish. <laughs> <laughs> and so I just started seeing if I could write a rap, just figure, just trying which, to which see. Which grade is this? This was second grade. Yeah. This was second grade, and I wrote me a rap. And when everybody finished, we went to the playground, and I kicked it for everybody. And they say, "Oh, you didn't write that." I say, "Yes, I did." Do another one tomorrow. And so every day they were waiting on me to come to the playground and kick a new verse. What was your early rap name? Man, I'm I'm ashamed to say. <laughs> I'm ashamed to say. It was Tiny T. Tiny T, and he ends up with a woman named Tiny. How beautiful is that? See? I never thought about that. 
<laughs> but that was that was my that was my name back then. Jeez. But when you got to do you got to do in '99, right? I you, did. Yeah. So wait, how'd you become Tip? Where did Tip come from? That was a family nickname, right? My daddy gave me that name. I think they say that was his grandfather's or either his father's name. Yeah. And he named he just you know affectionately called me that you know around the house. So when you was in the hood and hustling, people would just know you as Tip. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Just Tip, little bad ass Tip. <laughs> that, was, that was my name, little bad ass Tip. That, that's what everybody called me. And then I think when you got the deal, he's like you. KP signed you from uh, Parental Advisory, but they sort of tricked you into going to the studio, right? To, to get the that's deal. That's nasty as hell. Who what is that? that? Let's get his drink right. That's not. Time out. Right. Time out. Nah, you can continue on. If someone <laughs> could please, I need a new cup with some new ice. Now this has been ruined for me. <laughs> the king needs his beverage properly. <laughs> nah, I got people over there who gonna see about it. Go ahead. <laughs> no, get. <laughs> Getting the deal. Talk about that process of like, like, writing rap set great, but then finally getting a recording deal. What was your mentality at the time? Because at the time you were still hustling too, right? I was. That's really how I got. It was a dare, actually. Um, Jason Jeter, who's still my manager and partner, and Grand Hustle. Shout out to Jason Jeter. Right on. Shout out, shout out to Jay Jeter. Him, DJ Toon, and my cousin. And my cousin, uh, Tremel, his name, uh, well, his nickname is Toot, who, who passed. He's not, he's not with yeah, us no RIP, more. Yep. Yeah, he's actually uh, the inspiration to the record Let Your Heart Go, um, the dream record, the yep. last, number 15. So, so we were all in, like, we had, I, Toot had introduced me to Toomp. Toomp introduced me to Jay. And we'd all, you know, put our money together and did a demo, and it was jamming like a fool. And we knew that it <laughs> was better than everybody else's shit. It just was. Um, and then they had a meeting, you know what I'm saying? They, they had a meeting and, and had a, thank you, sir. They had a meeting and, and, and had sat me down, basically, because I was already on probation. I was bad, you know yeah. what I'm saying? And they sat me down like, hey, listen, you still out there doing what you doing, and to be honest with you, we could be wasting our time, our money. If you get caught, it's, it all goes away. So, you know, in natural T.I. fashion, I say, well, I tell you what then, I tell you what. Then you take me somewhere right now where I can go and I can get paid for doing this shit. Take me to see somebody who can sign me right now, and I quit. So then Jay say, I got somewhere. <laughs> so he was an intern at Patchwork Studios, and he knew that there were always people in there, you know, from Organized Noise and, you know, uh, Lil John and just, just all kinds of people in and out the studio. So he called him to see who was in session, and it happened to have been PA. So he just called him and said, yo, I got somebody up there who's hotter than anybody y'all fucking with right now. And they said, bring him up. So they brought me up there, and basically, Stop the beat, say, where he at? And I say, what's up? And then they say, him? I say, nigga, you? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So then they say, oh, okay, 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 I see. Well, then they hit the drum machine. Can you rap to this? Psh, nigga, what a booth. So I went in there and I recorded my verse. They were amazed. And KP came and heard and had a meeting with me. And uh, two weeks later, I get a page. And the page was a number I didn't recognize. This was back when we had pages and used, and used pay phones. Uh, <laughs> shit, go figure. So I called and they said, this is LaFace Records, man. I said, what? Who, did somebody, somebody page me from up there? And uh, <laughs> so KP hit me and said, uh, well, he, and he picked up the phone and said, what's up, did KP, you met with me the other night, PA? I'm like, oh, okay, what's happening? So he say, uh, he say, uh, well, you know, I was just saying, you know, you know, a group, a group of us was going out to L.A., man, for, for the Source Awards. Me, Outkast, Goody Mob, the Young Bloods. You know, we just wanted <laughs> to see. We just wanted to see. <laughs> we just wanted to see if you want to go. <laughs> what? When? 
I'm ready now. <laughs> I'm on the corner of Bankhead and South Grand. You can drive by here right now. I'm ready to go. <laughs> I can tell from 